Uh, my name is Amarjot. I'm talking to Abby in Hyderabad, and uh, it's morning time in Edmonton. It's snowing here. It's cold, and I'm sure the better weather in Hyderabad. So Abby is uh, connected to me, and he has something to tell me about what is happening to the ILTS uh, booking system in Hyderabad. And let's find out what he has to say. Abby, how are you? Yeah, sir. I'm fine. How are you, sir? Good. I'm. I'm glad that you came on the the session to talk about it. And uh, I know you want to keep your identity anonymous so that you know it becomes not controversial. You have something to tell me about the ILTS system in Hyderabad and what is happening to the booking system. Can you tell me what it is? Yes, sir. So. Uh... ILTS as well as the VFS uh, centers, sir. Yeah. Given that, so okay. the VFS centers, yeah, VFS centers. Uh, the consultant that we went through, so he said that uh, they're going to block and uh, and make money out of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, appointments. So they're going to sell it in black. So you have to pay around one lakh rupees uh, for uh, uh, the biometric and visa filing. So that's going to happen because the VFS centers are closed uh, and they are not open still. So we can expect this. So that's what the consultant has informed me. So he's saying that he's looking into the VFS centers uh, regularly and uh, and he asked me to do the same. Wait a minute. So if I if I understand this correctly, so you have to make an appointment with the VFS center in advance and and then they are booking a lot of appointments and then they are in turn selling it out to other p applicants who will yeah. pay uh, a huge amount of fee, which is you said one lakh plus fees for taking advantage of that booking slot. Is that right? That's right, sir. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. How, much, how much does it cost? Uh, this is for biometric? Yes, sir, biometric. Okay, so what is the cost of the biometric there? What, what do they charge normally for biometric? It's about what? Uh, Three hundred. I mean, sorry. Uh, how much are they charging a total in biometric fee there for the appointment and fees, and everything in Indian rupees? So uh, I don't have idea, sir. It's going to be around two, three hundred dollars. I don't have idea, sir. I'm sorry. Well, the, typically the biometric fee in Canadian dollars is, I think, uh, it's pretty so much the same is, everywhere. Sir. This is black. Black, sir, they're blocking it and uh, selling it for higher cost. So consultants are uh, bound to do that. Well, I, I know what, what I'm what I'm asking is that if the normal cost is $85 and is there additional cost for making an appointment with the VFS or that's the only cost that is payable for the fingerprint? It's only for uh, fingerprint. Okay, so is there any other booking cost besides the $85? VF, that's, uh, VFS is going to charge or uh, the consultant? The VFS. What is the VFS official fee? That's it, sir. $85. That's it. Okay. So $85, but uh, some consultants are blocking this <laughs> appointment. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, market, the market rate is, did you say, 1 lakh plus? Yes. yes. Wow. That's cool. That's more than $2,000. I mean, that's more than $1,900, $1,800 right there. Uh, and and uh, uh, when are the seats available? When are the appointments available? How far in advance in the future? I mean, when, when are the slots available? Or they are not available right now. This is just for the future planning, I think. Yes, sir. Actually, it's supposed to open this month, and uh, but uh, uh, they got, uh, I mean, the site, uh, it's updated. Again, uh, they're going to revisit uh, uh, this month ending. We would know, sir, update from them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your for your information, and I want other in India to confirm whether this is happening in their own regions or not, maybe north and east, west, everywhere, whether this has been happening. And if it is, then uh, this is unlawful and illegal, and you should somebody should report it to the Canadian High Commission at least that this is happening, so that this kind of malpractice can be checked uh, and, and nipped in the bud right right away. So I appreciate your uh, calling and letting me know. And uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Something in ILTS, perhaps? Yeah. Yes, sir. Even ILTS, I can talk about that. So my <laughs> wife uh, was the primary applicant, sir. So okay. uh, she, she tried uh, uh, writing ILTS, and uh, 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 she's end up 
she is ending up getting 6.5 in writing so she has taken up ilts more than six times and wow. uh, she is not oh, hold on hold on hold on six times she has taken ilts and the score is sometimes goes up goes down with the same more or less same same test yeah yes sir and you so, and you think and you think that this is not uh, fair because how can somebody who gets a higher higher test score is suddenly go down and you know even reevaluation and retesting several times yeah. does not make a difference so you you think there's there's some fishy there's some there's some problem going on in the in the in the system administration or maybe checking or evaluation yes sir i absolutely think about that this is this is this is quite a big business ilts you know i made a video many uh, months ago about you know the top players of ilts you know idp british council and other people who are who are stakeholders in this testing system all over the world they have close to 2 million or 3 million uh, you know test test takers and test examination sessions uh, you know people uh, you know just uh, you know the, all over the world people have to take this test for different countries like canada australia other countries for different purposes and uh, how much they are charging uh, close to i think 350 uh, for for one time 15, test 15000 rupees 15, so yeah whatever so 15000 and your wife wife herself has taken this for six six times 15000 into six that's close to what about 90000 <laughs> yes sir that's close to 90000 rupees just one person you know taking this yes. test multiple times in order that the uh, you know test score goes up uh, and you know I, i i just don't don't like the like the 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 you know the 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 business strategy of all all this testing uh, industry and and on top of that she has taken some uh, courses from consultants for training sessions so as well or no yes she has taken sir multiple okay, so not one multiple oh, <laughs> multiple times so so not only she has spent money on on you know uh, taking training sessions from so called consultants and english experts uh also paid money to uh, these organizations for six times and and still the score does not go up so somebody advised you that this is there is something wrong in yeah. the in the indian system indian or indian test, test evaluation system they told you that when you go to canada she already has a study visa when she goes yeah. to canada and then she can take the test in canada possibly in canada the the scoring system will be much fair and much more accurate is that right Yes, sir. This said that. Oh, good. Well, I I hope you uh, I hope you are successful that way. I I have never taken this test, so I do not know whether the testing system in Canada is more transparent or accurate. I hope it is. But in Canada, when you come here, uh, when she comes here, uh, then you know she can she can not only take IELTS, but there's another uh, test test called CELPIP, C E L P I P. So she can take that test as well. So hopefully. you know she'll get to balance out on you know what is the actual score and then we can go one more final uh, final uh, question about your experience with all this is that uh, your wife had already made a express entry profile and then she applied for study visa she already got the study visa despite having a express entry profile a lot of people ask me uh, if i have made a express entry profile will i get a temporary visa like tourist visa Uh, like a visitor visa or a study visa or work visa despite having express entry profile but in your case in your wife's case she was successful uh, despite having express entry profile is that correct yes sir that's right okay thank you very much for confirming this and uh, i hope uh, everybody who's watching this they will get to understand that this is happening and uh, you know just be very careful and be aware you know if something is happening around you and i would i would uh, appreciate if somebody somebody who has evidence of course i don't have the evidence somebody who has evidence about this uh, this uh, so called capitation money in appointment system for vfs should should complain it to the canadian high commission that you know this is happening so that hey somebody somebody needs to do something about it you know I, you know right. i mean somebody who's in the, on the field somebody who's affected by it so they should they should report it well uh Thank you very much. Do you have anything to say? And before I say goodbye, yes, sir. Uh, so it was great talking with you in terms of uh, giving us advice. And uh, so I'm a big fan of your YouTube YouTube channel. So that's how I got to know. Uh, I like the way how you present the cases that you take up. So let, yeah. So let me. I let appreciate me, that and thanks for your time, sir. Let me let me tell you let me tell you all uh, the. 
I it's not you. Uh, I am thankful to people in in uh, in uh, in Telangana. You know, uh, Hyderabad. Sikandarabad, uh, these are my favorite places to go. Whenever I go to India, I love to go to Hyderabad. I was invited by some consultants about three or four years ago. That was the first time I came to know. I went to the Rajiv Gandhi International Airport. It was a long drive from, uh, from there to the downtown. And I saw so many boards about Y axis and other names. I mean, I forgot all the names there. There are so many so-called immigration ex specialists and consultants in Hyderabad. I love the biryani thing there, you know, I saw mm -hmm. Charminar and I, uh, you know, visited the, the there's a big statue of N.T. Rama Rao in the lake there. I think there's some big lake there. So yeah, I made some seminars in high tech city. I enjoyed my stay in Hyderabad and I and I look forward to coming to Hyderabad, uh, you know, as soon as this COVID, COVID is lifted. And by the way, if I have to live in India, I mean, if I have to, many people think that, you know, <laughs> I mean, many people are coming from you know, India to Canada, but I have lived here in Canada many times. I have seen everything. I've done everything. If I have to live back in India for some time, uh, then uh, Hyderabad is right on the top of my list that I would like to live in Hyderabad for some time. Uh, one of the big, bigger things that I like about Hyderabad is that Hyderabad is a great uh, city for immigration law practices like people like me. It is full of you know, high tech people like you, you know, like engineers and software specialists like you. I know I, I had a little seminar at that time uh, three years ago and, uh, you know, in one of the hotel rooms, I forgot the hotel, uh, you know, uh, but there were like 300, 400 people in my hotel room and everybody was an engineer, like nine out of 10 people were engineers, software engineers, PhDs and, uh, you know, very qualified people, very very sophisticated, very qualified people. Many people had returned from US on H1B, L1. They were there. It was like a quality. It, it is a it is a quality of human resources I have never seen anywhere in the world. I've made seminars in Dubai. I've made seminars in Hong Kong. Uh, I've made seminars in, in some parts of India, uh, including, you know, Hyderabad, Pune and uh, Mumbai and, and of course in Punjab. But that kind of talent which Hyderabad has Nowhere in the world, nowhere, absolutely not. So it, it will be a great pleasure and great. Uh, and I, no wonder there are so many immigration companies and immigration consultants in Hyderabad trying to do this business. But you know, Hyderabad is right on the top of my list if I ever want to uh, spend a long time in India. So Hyderabad is right there. So thank you very much for providing that opportunity. And I always have great respect for for Telugu uh, people because they are quite smart. The English is good. They're, the language skills and the education, the experience, and you know they are right on the top of the list. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.